Hey guys, have you ever wanted to use an OAG, but people keep telling you how fiddly they are? And you're like, nah, I'm good. Well today, I'm going to show you how to set one up. Okay, so this is your standard off-axis guider from what I've seen. Uh, most off-axis guiders or OAGs are kind of made the same way. And in my case, this is a ZWO. And it has a few pieces that you're going to want to pay attention to. And let me show you what those pieces are. So on the OAG itself, you'll see these three screws. And if you untighten those screws, uh, there's an outer piece that'll just pop out. And this is what your astro cam is going to screw into, uh, or your filter wheel, or a filter drawer. It doesn't matter. It's just uh, whatever you end up using, uh, this piece will screw directly onto it. And then you have the OAG itself, and you'll see the prism in there, of course, and you'll see the part where your guide camera sits in. And how to remove this piece, because you can remove it, because it's fully adjustable, is you'll see that hex screw here. You're going to want to untighten it, and then untighten this screw, and then it just pops right off. And then this hex screw will adjust up or down where your prism sits in relation to your image sensor. And I'll show you how to adjust that. Next, you're going to want to grab your astro camera and your off-axis guider. In my case, this is a ZWO ASI 183mm Pro. And you're going to take your off-axis guider and just thread it on to your astro camera. All right, let's thread it on, and then you're going to just kind of eyeball it. So if you look in there, all you're looking for is just to make sure that the prism isn't in front of the sensor itself. And mine's already adjusted, but how I adjusted it was by loosening this little hex screw and moving the prism up and down. And if you're just using the astro camera with the off-axis guider, uh, to adjust it so that you can make sure it's parallel to the sensor uh, all you do is just loosen those screws and tighten them down and that's all it takes so if you're able to adjust your prism here then that means no matter if you're going to use a filter wheel or a filter drawer that prism is always going to be out of the way of the sensor so that's why it's important to adjust it on the astro camera itself but keep in mind if you are going to use a filter wheel or a filter drawer uh, this the the placement of the prism in relation to the sensor may change because of what you threaded it to so in my case, I use a filter wheel, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so here's my camera with filter wheel attached, and this is kind of how it goes. You just you want to make sure that your off-axis guider rides above your filter system and also above your camera. You don't want your off-axis guider behind a filter system because you're trying to get as much light into the off-axis guider as you can and since the off axis guiders prism isn't you know in the middle of your scope it's only going to get a little bit of light and you definitely don't want to put a filter in front of it that dims the light even more so that's the bit that's the most important thing to remember okay so you're going to want to thread your off-axis guider onto the filter wheel and my off-axis guider came with this handy T2 to T2 adapter so I'm just going to thread that on All right, and then I'm going to thread on my off-axis guider Then you're going to want to look in there. So 
see how the prism in relation to the sensor changed just a just a tad it's actually in the corner now and which is okay you can you can have it in the corner since we adjusted the prism out of the way of the sensor it doesn't matter where it is so it's always going to be out of the way of the sensor and not it's not going to cast shadows on your image uh, I like it in the corner actually I, I prefer it there in the corner and if you wanted to adjust it all you gotta do is adjust it by loosening the three screws here on the outer portion you can see you can spin it around so you can you can pretty much put it wherever you want I I like it right here like in the corner because when I put my guide camera on it's just really handy uh, to adjust it there. Now you're going to want to grab your guide camera housing, right? This is where your guide camera is going to sit into. And you're going to want to put it on your off axis guider. So here's my off axis guider again. And you're going to just want to throw it on the prism. And that's the prism. And I'm just going to put it on right there. One thing I wish someone told me. Uh, or that was documented well, is you see where the prism meets the guide camera housing? And you see how it sticks out a little bit? Well, short story is I put my guide camera in there and I, I didn't adjust it. And I scratched the protective window that goes over the sensor on my guide camera, so I had to replace it because I didn't adjust it. So all you're going to want to do is and tighten this screw here if you tightened it and then just move it up or down until it's flush and then tighten it down with that screw oh let me do that a little bit better I don't want to scratch my camera again just make sure it's flush and if your guide camera comes with you know, a protective type of ring, which most of them will do. Definitely use that. Uh, that's going to protect it further. I use the smaller one because um, it just it's where my back focus lies, so I have to uh, use the smaller ring. But then you're just going to put your guide camera in there. And then when you're out in the field, all you do is move it backwards and forwards until you obtain the proper back focus. So that's really all it takes. And when you're happy with where everything is, uh, make sure to tighten everything down. That's the last thing. So tighten these two screws so they're not moving around and you won't have to worry about it. And that's how you adjust your off-axis guider. Not too bad setting one of these up, was it? One other question that I also see around the community is, what if I can't find a guide star? And in the six months that I've used an OAG, I've never not been able to find a guide star yet. The only thing that I've noticed is I do have to crank my ASI 120mm Mini uh, up to about 96 in game. But other than that, it works beautifully. So I guess I hope this video helped you out in some way, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one, and uh, clear skies. Peace.